Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. As you can see for this test, we have two VMs side by side. On the left, we have Windows Defender set up and ready to go. On the right, we have Kaspersky Standard, a well-known third-party AV. We're going to test both these systems against an array of malware directly from the source. We have automation scripts that are going to visit hundreds of malware websites. And we're going to see what the user experience looks like on both systems as that's happening. So without further ado, let's get started. And we're off to the races. The first test is underway. As you can see, both products are blocking threats. We're seeing alerts from both Windows Defender and Kaspersky. Now, while this is running, I just want to mention a couple of things about the environment. So settings wise, everything is turned on for Windows Defender. That includes blocking potentially unwanted programs, blocking suspicious apps, app and browser control, as you can see, is turned on. On the side of Kaspersky, it's pretty much the same. So we have blocking of potentially malicious tools. Now, already we've got a few differences between the products. So Kaspersky, of course, has a different reporting mechanism. It's deleting objects in real time and telling us exactly which file is affected. Whereas with Windows, we just see a cross and then some notifications about malware being detected. And then we have to click on view details to see exactly what the malware is. By the way, if you're noticing the uh, numbers on the left for links not particularly synchronized, that's because we're running this multi-threaded. So we're starting multiple downloads at the same time. Some of them may finish earlier, some of them may finish later, and that's why the numbers may not be sequential, but that's totally fine. The test is running as expected. Also worth noting that Kaspersky, of course, has a lot more granularity in its settings and things that you can modify within the file antivirus system. That's one of the differences between Windows Defender and some third-party AVs is that Windows Defender is still a bit limited in terms of the UI. Another thing worth noting is that in the case of Kaspersky, I did see some web alerts in the case of links directly being blocked as we're trying to visit them. I didn't see anything similar with Windows Defender, but we're gonna find out because the script does detect if a download is blocked directly. We are going to see those numbers once the test is complete. Now in the case of Kaspersky, we have few threats that still need to be resolved, apply to all, delete, and that should take care of that. Going to do the same for everything else. Also, a quick disclaimer, while the tests are running, Kaspersky is a member of our Malix program, which means they receive additional reports and test data from us. However, every public test you see is always conducted independently, and there's no interference from anybody. In fact, even I have no idea what's going to happen here. Interestingly, both tests seem to finish at pretty much exactly the same time. We visited 670 URLs. I believe the threshold was 1,000, but of course, we're only visiting URLs that are going to give us an EXE download. Kaspersky has blocked 2.09% of links, Windows 0.45%. That's only counting links that just could not be downloaded directly. So I did expect it to be low. In the case of Windows Defender, as you can see, some PUPs are found. So we do have that setting enabled. We're trying to resolve them, but it is a bit slow to respond, as you can see. In the case of Kaspersky, everything seems to be already resolved. Another thing worth noting is the uh, final number of files we were able to successfully download. So on the right, we have 79 files remaining. We're still waiting for the numbers on Windows Defender side because Windows Defender is still actively removing threats. And this brings us to <laughs> one of the issues here. So as you can see, Windows Defender UI does start to get very glitchy. Uh, when you run out of space in terms of the threats being reported. And I just feel like this should be resolved in a product that's part of the OS. Like surely we can get a number of threats detected and a better UI to see the different details and, you know, not this buggy mess of a flashing screen and then iterating over and over again. I mean, just look at it. I'm trying to resolve these threats. I'm clicking on start actions. For a moment, it says, feel free to continue using your system, nothing to worry about. And then a few moments later, the screen starts flashing and we're seeing threats again. And despite me um, several times clicking on remove on this file, it's just not resolved. It would also be a bit unnerving as a user if this was my main system <laughs> and I was actually worried about the malware. 
Now this is the second time I'm clicking on remove for the PUP. I guess part of it is also that Windows Defender is slow in dealing with these threats and it's not able to report effectively while it's in the process of removal. But anyway, we're going to give it its time and we'll see. <laughs> and funnily, now just the UI just crashes. If we take a look at the folders now, we've got over 300 files still on the Windows Defender side, 79 on the side of Kaspersky, but of course Windows Defender is still removing stuff. And finally, we've got the numbers for Windows Defender and it seems it removed 476 with 138 remaining. While I say that, if you look at the folder, there are 122 items. So it does seem like Windows Defender removed a few more and we're still getting alerts. So perhaps, even though our script thinks it is complete, it looks like Windows Defender is still removing threats. Screen is still flashing, so I'm just going to give it some more time. Meanwhile, we're going to do a file scan on the side of Kaspersky. We're also going to do the same with Windows Defender when it's complete, just to make sure there are no additional threats that either of these products detects. It looks like Kaspersky has deleted two additional objects. Interestingly, it seems like we've got 37 items left once Windows Defender is finally done removing items. We're also going to do a scan like we did in the case of Kaspersky to see if there are any additional items that are detected. But already that's uh, very interesting to see that Windows Defender actually ends up with a lower number in the end, even though it's much slower to get there. It seems like we're finally done removing threats, even though it's hard to say with this UI. <laughs> And it's crashed again. <laughs> I've clicked the button as many times as humanly possible and we're still left with 37 items. Nothing else is being removed. So I think we're just gonna call it day here. Now we're also gonna automate the execution of all of these files on both these systems. And then we're going to do some scans with Hitman Pro Second Opinion Scanner to see what gets through. All right, we're back. We've executed the malware, reset the system, and now we're doing our second opinion scans. As you can see, multiple things were installed. We're seeing new icons on desktop. In the case of Kaspersky, I did see a joke malware execute. It will be interesting to see if it's actually malicious, if it persists and does something with the system, because there were some annoying pop-ups while the test was running. But if it's just joke malware, maybe it just goes away on restart. The scans are now complete. And interestingly, we've got some malware detections on the side of Kaspersky, but a couple of them are in a temp folder. And the third one seems like an uninstaller of a PUP. So the uninstall program itself is detected. In the case of Windows Defender, we've got a lot of registry keys, remnants from re-image repair. So nothing really serious in either case. Even though we have quite a few applications installed, not a lot of them were detected by Hitman Pro either. In both cases, we have CoinSurf and uh, Chrominus icons on desktop. A couple more icons in the case of Kaspersky. Again, I don't really see anything serious in either case, unless the uninstalled.exe is a fake Trojan or something like that, which is the only file we have outside of temp files. So we're just going to explore it. And then visit the folder run the uninstall.exe program, see if it does something other than uninstall. Oh, we've got an eraser and it just removed itself. So that is definitely a false positive. That's what it looks like because it seems to be an actual uninstaller of the program. So nothing really on the side of Kaspersky either other than a couple of temp files. So a good result for both products, but I hope that going through the test in this way showed you some of the differences and how they function. But I have to say, Windows Defender detecting as many PUPs as it did was definitely a surprise for me. Good to see that it has improved on that front. Now we're gonna move on to the uh, next part of the test, which is going to be the ransomware test. And in this case, we have 74 infamous ransomware samples from the last five years. These are serious threats that are going to encrypt our data if given the chance. We're going to execute them from a network directory as we always do. That's what the dash N is for. And we're going to see which system is less affected. So once again, we're going to run the script on both the systems. Threats are already being blocked. Interestingly, in the case of Windows Defender, we already have ransomware taking over the screen. We've got F Society ransomware. We've got something else happening on the desktop as well. That's a little bit concerning. Got some errors popping up. 
You can see the proactive detection on the case of Kaspersky, which has just finished, is 100%. Case of Windows Defender, oh, <laughs> we've got Black Claw running at the moment. I'm gonna try to shut this down so we can look at our script. We've got a proactive detection of about 92%, which means some files are being allowed to execute. We are still seeing the prompt, ransomware is being found, Windows Defender is trying to deal with it, but unfortunately it's not dealing with all of them, and we've already got some uh, ransom notes on the desktop. Test is now complete, as you can see we've got five misses that may not seem like a lot but even missing one ransomware could lead to your files being encrypted and in this case our files are indeed encrypted uh, by black claw if we take a look at the documents inside of kaspersky our files seem to be all right if you open up a text file you can see the difference between an encrypted file and a non-encrypted file as you can see you can read the play on the right the great works of Shakespeare, and on the left, we have them translated into God knows what language. <laughs> Just kidding, that's what encrypted text looks like. And unfortunately, in the case of Windows Defender, our data is encrypted and not recoverable. Now, many of these are well-known threats, so I would have expected Windows Defender to know about them, to be able to block them, but I think part of the reason it doesn't do very well in these ransomware tests is also the way it functions because a lot of the time it is sending data to the cloud waiting for analysis before it can make a decision on the machine and when it comes to complex malware that executes really fast windows defender just probably fails to track them the reason i say that is because again i've seen inconsistent results in this part of the test there have been times where i've run it where it's detected more it's detected less it's also worth noting from some of our previous tests that the detection ratio with Windows Defender gets much worse if you disable the internet. Whereas with Kaspersky, you can disable the internet, you can even turn off most of the signature component, and as long as you just have the System Watcher component enabled, it is still able to at least prevent your data from being encrypted. I'm not going to rerun that test right now, because even with the internet turned on, as you can see, we've got data encrypted on one side, so it would feel like beating a dead horse, but I will link the other tests in the description where you can see that happening. Another thing worth noting, in the case of Windows Defender, you have controlled folder access, which I would highly recommend using if you do use it, because that is one way to at least control the damage that can be done by ransomware by protecting some of your most important folders. But of course, it's not ideal because you can't protect all your folders, and if you do, other applications can't access them either. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found these results interesting and insightful. A lot of these tests are surprising to me as well, because I have no idea what's going to happen going into them, but we will be doing more of them in the future. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it, of course. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below. I do read all the comments I get. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure, and Happy New Year, everyone.